Hello, this is Patrick with Royas, and welcome back to our multiplayer game series. Uh, today we'll be teaching you how to do a networking manager in Godot. Uh, so let's go into that right now. First thing I'm going to do is create a regular node. I'm going to rename this node to be network manager. And then I'm going to attach a script, a new script. I am going to place this in the scripts folder, call it network manager. Perfect. Okay. First thing we're going to do in this network manager script, we're going to delete the process function. We're not going to need that. And here we are going to go class name network manager, and that'll extend this node. Okay. Um, so here I would actually like you to pause the video and have a little bit of a think about what you think the network manager should control. What parts of the networking functionality should it handle? So pause the video and then when we come back, you'll see my answers. Okay, so here's my list. The standard functionality, so the bare minimum, I think a network manager should do is handle the hosting of a server, connecting of clients to the server, and disconnections. I think that's the absolute minimum that a network manager should do. And we'll cover all of this in this video. Um, then the core functionality, the things that I think just about every game could use would be track connected players, track networked objects, spawn objects across network, and manage object ownership. This is going to be included in the series so far of what we've got. And then I have this extended list, which is things that aren't covered in the series, but I think are super nice things to have in a network manager. So things like managing database connections, network ticks, authentication, batching sync bars, room management, so you can put players into different rooms, and proximity management so that like you only send RPCs, players who are near each other, stuff like that. I think that's all super important stuff to manage, but uh, we're not going to have time to get into this during the series. If the series goes well, we may be able to extend the series and go further in depth into these things, but I'm going to leave this comment up here and we can track what we've done so far in the series. Okay, so now let's get into actually making this network manager. The thing is, is we've done the hosting and connection already in this character body script. So what I'm gonna do, roll over to the side here, and I'm just gonna cut this, get rid of that, go back here, go into ready, paste this here. And now we've gotta copy these functions. I'm gonna copy all four of these, save that, paste them here. I'm going to create this multiplayer peer here. I'm gonna remove that. Save this again, go up here, paste it here, and I'm going to export a couple variables, one for the IP and one for the port, so that we are not relying on these hard-coded ones. So I'll go at export var IP equals, actually I'll say uh, type string equals 127.0.0.1 and then export another var and call this one port. This is going to be a type int and it's going to be 9999. Now I'm going to go replace those. So this is going to be port here, port, port, IP. Okay. Now that that's done, let's add the disconnection and then I'll explain how all of this works and why I'm doing this. So for the disconnection, I'm going to go down here and hello on peer connected. That seems logical to me. I'm going to go funk on here disconnected and it's going to take in a peer ID as well here ID and it's going to be type int and then I am just going to copy this line here and I'm going to say disconnected. Okay, there we go. So what am I doing here? Well, as you can see, I'm exporting this IP and port so that we can edit those in the inspector. If you want to change them yourself for if you want to host this game for your friends or whatever, here we are creating a multiplayer peer using Enet. This is just a, Godot has a layer where you can swap out different multiplayer peers. So you can use web ones, you can use Enet, you can use something like Steam. And these can all be different peers and you can swap them out. I'm just using Enet for this series. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm creating a new Enet multiplayer peer. And then we go into the ready function and I am doing it this way where I'm getting the command line args because it's easier for testing rather than going and clicking a button to host and connect for each client every single time I restart the game. So this, this is just for testing. We'll swap this out later with a proper connection menu, but I figured I'd show this method for simplicity of early testing. That's, that's it basically. Now in this create server function. So in this multiplayer peer, we're just calling create server and then passing in the port. That's it. 
and then setting the Godot multiplayer dot multiplayer peer equal to this multiplayer peer that we just created with Enet, then this multiplayer has a signal called peer connected, and we're just connecting our on peer connected function. So whenever this happens, we call it. And for the disconnect, I will do basically the same thing. So this is only getting connected on the server. Peer disconnected dot connect on here disconnected and get rid of that there we go and so now we get a message every time a player disconnects as well as connect so now we've got this connect client it's basically the same thing but instead of creating a server we're creating a client we're put passing in the ip as well instead of just the port setting the same thing and then connecting this signal connected to server that's that's all that we're doing here now we've got all this connection and disconnection so let's test this out okay as you can see they are working still Everything's working good, but there's this weird thing of the client can control and the server can control where we're going. So let me go and fix that so only the server can do this. Okay, so now that we're back in the character body script, I'm going to go to on ready, on ready. I'm going to make a var net, oh, not that net work manager of type network manager and we are going to get node actually i forgot to do something right here i'll just pass in an empty string for now and we will fix this in a second we'll go back to Godot. uh we need to make this a scene and we're going to auto load it so i'm going to just drag this into objects network manager save it there we go then we can delete this here now we're going to go to project project settings globals auto load we're going to add this scenes, objects, network manager. There we go. I'm going to add an underscore here because this name will clash with the class name that we've created ourselves. So we don't want that. So I'm going to add it. And there we go. We've got that on auto load. So now let's on ready grab this. So I'm going to go slash root. And now it knows that we've got our network manager there in auto load. Simple enough. So we can scroll down to our input function here. And so every time we click, we can say if network manager dot multiplayer dot is server, we will just if it's not this, we will return. There we go. Simple enough. Let's go back and test this. And so I'm clicking around on the client. Nothing's happening. Clicking on the server and we are moving around. Now, this isn't secure. A uh, player could just bypass that if check and still move our server player. So in the next episode, we'll talk about how authority and RPCs and stuff work. And so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.